Hello everyone. On the evening of the 17th of July, we're going to have a Cancer new moon. And on that very same day, the nodal axis is changing signs. So it's a very important and relevant and emphasized uh, Cancer new moon. Not to speak of the fact that the, the sun is coming up to an opposition with Pluto, which is another two, three days maybe before it becomes exact. Yes, we do live in interesting times. So let's take a look. This is going to be a longer video. I apologize, but uh, I, I really have a lot to say about this particular energy pattern. So uh, the Cancer New Moon is becoming exact on July the 17th, uh, half past 7 p.m., 7.32 p.m., and it is exactly squaring Aries. Aries means drastically altered outward circumstances. That is the main feature of this new moon. But luckily, there are some redeeming uh, patterns as well. Uh, so besides the sun-moon conjunction in Cancer in the, the uh, seventh house, you still have the um, Vesta Austria conjunction. Uh, again, they are now within three and a half degrees. But until November, they are going to become exact and then separating a little bit. But up till November, you can focus Vesta on karma breaking Austria. And the midpoint structure with uh, Chiron, Eris, and uh, uh, the North Node is still there. Eris is defined by the Chiron uh, North Node midpoint. Uh, I explained this many, many times, but I'm just letting you know that it, it is still there. And the traffic jam in the early degrees of uh, Virgo. Uh, Transpluto, Pallas Athena, and Mars. So uh, war, uh, defense, and dimension jump are still moving together. Uh, Mars will be coming out of it uh, faster, Pallas Athena then, and they're going to leave Transpluto in a couple of uh, days and weeks to come. And uh, the um, vertex, which denotes uh, um, the point of no free will, is with Mercury. So, and Mercury in, in uh, Leo wants to shine, wants to have a say in the matter, but uh, Vertex kind of suggests that uh, you, you won't be able to say what you really need to because it is simply not happening. So here is uh, the Harmony Triangle and Little Engine uh, linked to the Sun Moon. This is around 25 degrees. Uh, I did include Uranus because it it it's kind of still there. I mean, it's two and two degrees, around two degrees. So the harmony triangle is between Uranus change, uh, Lilith. This is the asteroid Lilith, revolt against injustice, and the Sun Moon conjunction is at the apex of the harmony triangle. So uh, the triangle between Uranus and and uh, Lilith indicate that. Finally, people are co coming uh, to realize how badly they are being treated, how horribly wrong the leaders are, how they don't really care what you think, the ordinary person. They are, they are just having this global agenda and they are being paid by the global corporations and by, by the global um, um Hmm. groups, let's put it this way nicely, uh, you know, like the World Economic Forum, like all these councils and, and whatever it is, not so secret societies anymore. This used to be secret societies 40, 50, 60 years ago, and they kind of def defined what they want for, you You know, this United Europe cretin idea. It's not going to happen. And it's never going to work unless, of course, you completely change um, uh, the um, um, the cultural uh, blueprint of Europe, and that's kind of happening because uh, if you take a look at the the UN's uh, uh, document uh, that is dated way back in two thousand three, so it's twenty years ago, and it's called Replacement Migration, which explains that we are dying out. Uh, uh, you know, people, the old people of Europe, don't want to. Uh, uh, um, 
propagate, they don't have any children, so we need new fresh blood because we need people who work. And that's practically, so that's what they are trying to do now. Anyhow, so this is a harmony triangle. And then you also have a little engine. Little engine is a square uh, sextile and the quincunx. And uh, it is still quite effective. It's not as effective as, as the proper engine, which has a trine uh, uh, square and the quincunx. But it's still kind of... Um, uh, mixes the, the potential of the sextile with the drive of the square and with the karmic potential of the quincunx. And in this case, it is Lilith, the sun, moon, and Aries. So actually, the Aries sun, moon, square is kind of dissolved, both by Uranus, although there is no Aries-Uranus semi-sextile, but the, uh, the tension is being re released by uh, the trying to Lilith, and uh, of course, there's a Queen Hunks also. So that that's the one of the main uh, configurations. And if we take a look at the transcendental objects mm -hmm. on Sun Moon, you have Nemnosune, the uh, goddess or the muse of memory that we need to learn from history. We need to learn from the past. Has it occurred to you that they no longer teach history in school at schools? Why not? Because when you learn history, you can learn from it, you can actually know what happened and you may avoid the same mistakes. Of course, they don't want this. They want us to commit the exact same mistakes. And then Procyon, which is Alpha uh, Canis Minor, uh, a very bright star, 0 0.5, but uh, actually it is near the brightest star in, in the sky, which is Sirius. And Sirius is overshining everything. And Procyon may be a very bright star, but next to Sirius, it is unable sh to show its true potentials. And it signifies the ability to really excel, except there's someone who is even brighter than you. That's the problem. So you have to come to grips and, and uh, understanding of this. On Uranus, we have Helio, uh, the sun god, Philosophia, philosophy of course and lempo lempo is a um, uh, finnish god it he, it used to be a, it used to be an old creator god but after after roman christian catholicism uh, they he was relegated to a demon so um, uh, it's a it's, that's what happens most of the time when you have a religion and then comes another religion another regime uh regime change usually demonizes the previous one so does religion unfortunately isn't it funny did it occur to you how many people were killed in the name of god just by, because you believed something else. And this is what happens now, not in the name of religion, but in the name of belief systems. You are cancelled, you are banned, you are shadow banned, you are um, you are thrown out of YouTube or 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 Facebook or or not no longer Twitter, thank God. So what happened to, to free speech? What happened to sharing your ideas? Well, interesting anyhow so yeah history repeats itself that's what i'm i'm saying that that's why they no longer teach history at schools okay on Ares, you have heracles the hero and lahesis lahesis is the uh, middle of the fates actually you need to talk to lahesis and tell her what you would like to achieve and then cloto the first of the fates is starting to make you threads collect the threads that you need. And then Lahesis is cr uh, creating the fabric of your life, of your destiny. And then uh, Atropos, the last one, comes and cuts it to measure. Uh, so Lahesis is the, uh, the main of the three. And uh, yeah, we need to create our own destiny. We need to focus on that heroically, kind of. And then, uh, as you can see, there's also, uh, if we add uh, two more, you have Deucalion. Uh, and De Deucalion is the survivor. Deucalion is uh, Prometheus's son. And when Zeus uh, kills off mankind uh, with a huge flood, uh, Deucalion and his wife are the, the, the sole survivors. So Deucalion always signifies who is going to survive and who is going to be chosen to survive. Uh, and it, at the moment, it is opposite um, uh, Alicanto, which is uh, right uh, 25 degrees uh, Taurus. And Alicanto is a, um, uh, a funny uh, TNO. It's actually an ETNO, extreme TNO. 
and it comes from the Chilean mythology. It, it, it is a nocturnal bird who eats precious metals uh, and uh, his feathers are shining at night, but if it's eat, eating too much, it's unable to fly. What it signifies is very simple. If you, if you, I mean, if you amass too much and if you're too greedy, you won't be able to 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 work uh, or function in a proper way. You won't be able to ful fulfill your task or your destiny. So those are the uh, those are the, the the things. And and as you can see, for instance, with Dao Kalyon and with Alicanto, you do have a a classic trapeze, the Lilith, Sun, Moon, Alicanto, and Daucalion. And of course, Uranus is kind of close to it, and all kinds of other uh, structures you can actually take a look. Okay, there is also a mutable square in this. It's not quite to my liking. It's not really close. So this is a an, an applying mutable square, but I still need to need to warn you because there's going to be a mass Saturn opposition soon. It is already within orb, so that's why I I decided to put it in there. So Mars is opposite Saturn, and that is one clear indication of accidents and breaking your bones or breaking something. And luckily, uh, um, Pulse Athena is there. Luckily, Mars is is direct and Saturn is is uh, retrograde, but still, it's an opposition, and with an opposition, anything can happen. Yeah, Pulse Athena gives us. Uh, some insight and some wisdom for the space time and of course uh, transpluto is dimension jump and if you uh, if you take a look at the mutable square at the apex there's a uh, um, Australia, the karma breaker so this some something is going to break it's a mutable t-square which means that uh, according to judy hall all mutable squares um kind of denote um things that you have worked on or worked with in previous incarnations, but it needs to be resolved. So you need to put more energy and effort into it. On this triple conjunction in Virgo, we, you have two uh, asteroids, Fantasia and Avicenna. Fant fantasy, of course, which means uh, the, the goddess of fantasy means that, yes, try to understand what's going on using your fantasy. And Avicenna, Ibn Sina, the, the Latin name of Ibn Sina, who was a physician and a magician. Uh, and uh, he is uh, one of the protagonists in the 1001 Nights tale. Tales, I think it's in plural. Okay, uh, on Saturn, you have Gong Gong and two fixed stars, Sal uh, Sadalaj and Danab Adiga. Gong Gong is a very drastic uh, uh, TNO. It uh, comes from Chinese mythology. It is a snake-headed human, uh, some sort of uh, god or some sort of demon who uh, has this uh, copper head with a an iron forehead and when he is actually fighting with Zurong, Zurong, uh, he makes a, a hole, he bumps into the firmament of the cosmos and makes a huge hole there and uh, as a result the sun gets misaligned and everything gets disrupted so actually it effectively describes the Vila cataclysm 11,600 years ago when everything fell apart uh, so it's there now so we are at the verge of something similar unless we really come to our senses that's what it says and then Sadalajpia is the gamma star of uh, of uh, Aquarius it is the star at the urn where the, the water the, the water of life is flowing freely out and it, it it is it symbolizes the water of life so there's this life-giving energy of Sadalajpia and then Deneb Adiga is the alpha star of uh, of uh, Cygnus and uh, it is this one that is actually, um, is it? Yes. Anyhow, so it is one of the uh, shaman stars or Tato stars, and it's flying towards the, uh, uh, on the Milky Way, towards uh, the North Pole. And, and it's a healer. It's a healing star. Uh, and on, on uh, Australia, you have uh, Nyx and Hell. Nyx is night, the night, night, dark night. And Hell is uh, the... Um, uh, goddess of the underworld in Norse mythology. So that's on Australia. That's what we need to, to break all the medical karma about. 
There's also a complex planetary picture around zero and uh, the uh, last degrees of the signs. Uh, and I did put there uh, for you to see, as you can see at the moment of the new moon, the nodes are at zero degrees, zero minutes, five seconds. So this really minutes away, seconds away from uh, going back, I mean, retrograding into Aries and, and Libra. The ascendant or descendant for the London chart is also zero degrees. So uh, actually you have um, a misaligned um, uh, trapeze, classic trapeze with the ascendant, descendant, uh, south node and Venus, which is still in 28 degrees um, Leo. So that's where it is misaligned because the, the south node is still in Scorpio, Venus is still in Leo, so you have a sextile, which is a square, a fixed square energy, that's the top of the, uh, the, the uh, um, trapeze, and you can see that there is this diamond shape, which is the classic trapeze and a T-square, the T-square comes from Neptune, which again is misaligned uh, energetically, because uh, the ascendant descendant is at, at Capricorn, Cancer zero degree, but Neptune is still in in Pisces. So here you have a square, which is a trine. Uh, interestingly, the, the in, um, descendant Neptune square is energetically a trine. And as you can see, Pluto is at 29 degrees 14, and Saturn is at zero degrees 21 of uh, Gemini, and uh, Pluto is in, in Capricorn. So here you have a trine, which is a quincunx. And there are all sorts of of um, non non closing energies as well, but misaligned energies. And and if you whenever you read charts, it's important to see the energy patterns. If you see a chart like this, that a number of things are at zero degree and a couple of other things that are, are at 28, 29 degrees, then you will have misaligned structures which don't work the way you suppose they work. So you need to actually take a look at at uh, and 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 see everything. There's also uh, various fingers of fame. There's also a non-closing boomerang, uh, simply because uh, with the, the nodal axis is there. Uh, the, the Sedna north node semi-sextile is there, but the Neptune uh, north node is not closing because the uh, orb is too wide and Neptune is, of course, separating from it. And then there is one energetically balanced finger of fate. Uh, the Neptune Pluto sextile is becoming exact again. It used to be one of the major uh, outer planet aspects in the 20th century. Now they are again aligned. And Venus at the very end of Leo is making two quincunxes to them, creating a finger of fate, an energetically correct and balanced finger of fate. Here are the transcendental aspects. On the ascendant, you have Sinistra, which is new Ophiopus, uh, uh, not very bright, but still a bright star. And this is the left hand of Ophiopus. Ophiopus is, is the healer, the celestial healer. And uh, it usually denotes karmic wounds that are healed, but in non uh, non uh, home uh, non allopathic ways. So the ancient the ancient uh, remedies. That's what it symbolizes. On the descendant, you have Menkalian, which is Beta Auriga, which is a variable star. So we don't exactly know how bright it is. And Menkalian, the and whole a whole um, that's the chariot. So the chariot here, and it denotes the ability to rectify something with a mechanical object. So when you can't actually walk, use a, char a chariot. That's what, what it means. So be resourceful and smart to overcome your own um, shortcomings. And then on Venus, you have two fixed stars, Adhafera, which is Zeta <laughs> Leo. Sorry about that. I didn't put here Leo. Sorry, sorry. I... Okay. Yeah, that's the that's the problem with uh, uh, fast bird, right? And uh, uh, of course, Hydra is a not a Y, but a, not an I, but a Y. Anyhow, yes. And uh, this is Pisces. Oh shoot, I never, I never checked it. I apologize, but I'm barely overworked, and and uh, it's, I'm not going to redo this. So you have to apologize me. Anyhow, so on Venus. You have Adhafera, which is Zeta Leo, which is uh, the whole constellation of Leo is about 
ruling and reign and sovereignty, and Alfard, which is the mouth of the Hydra, and the Hydra has a poisonous blood, and then, of course, Heracles needs to conquer it, and the way it conquers is to lift it out of its element, water, where it just uh, regrows its heads, and then in uh, well, water, of course, is emotion. So, you, so take the, your hydra out of your emotions, put it in the air, which is uh, uh, rationality and 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 thinking, and also uh, communication, the element of communication. And there, you can kill its its head. There, you can cut its head. So that's what the what Alfard symbolizes. On Pluto, we have two centaurs who. Um, uh, centaurs, Orius and Amicus. We are back to Orius and Amicus again, simply because now uh, Pluto retrograded back to that degree. Orius is mitigated punishment. Look around. Whistleblowers are being punished and uh, and perpetrators are being let out. Ridiculous. And, and uh, Amicus is still the centaur who doesn't care for sacred objects. Uh, in uh, 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 he he needs to to fight, and in order to be victorious, he crashes into a, uh, a sanctuary, grabs a candelabra, and starts fighting with it. So when you just don't care what you are utilizing, you need to win. That's Amicus. And on the north node, you have Athene, who is the uh, protector of Athens. So it's not Pallas Athena, the the uh, uh, the second uh, asteroid uh, spotted. It's a different asteroid, just Athene. And uh, you have Mirach and Alresha. And uh, Mirach is Beta Andromeda, so a very feminine star. And Alresha is, uh, the name means the knot, where the two fish in the constellation are, are uh, bound together. One of the fish moves back, wants to to flow back, to, to swim back into uh, the zodiac, which means the wheel of, uh, of the hero's journey. And the other one wants to go out of it, wants to fly up into the uh, universal levels, wants to leave this whole thing. And the knot doesn't allow them to, they, they need to stay in both words, so to speak. And that's exactly actually symbolizing reincarnation because the soul is eternal and a multidimensional entity. But we need to come down to the earth plane to learn and to evolve. So that's exactly what Arisha is symbolizing. And then on Sedna, you have Metis, Sibele, and Hatshepsut, three strong women. Metis, the goddess or the titaness of wisdom. She was the, uh, the mother of, of uh, Athene, by the way. Uh, Sibele, which is uh, Minoragia's main goddess. And then Hatshepsut, the, the only documented feminine pharaoh in um, Egypt. And you have more somnus, which is uh, death and sleep. This this uh, TNO was very prominent in uh, during the pandemic, and I keep telling you that they are they are actually concocting another thing. So it's this this when the war is coming out, when the war when we are getting bored of the war, then they are going to have another pandemic and or migration and or uh, climate change. Those are the those are the four main agendas. Climate change, migration, war, and and uh, pandemic, and they are varying it and just want us to push into despair and poverty. That's what they, their agenda is. And then uh, the Pleiades, luckily, the home of the Creator Goddess, is still there. It's going to be there for two for the next two years. Okay. The nodes are changing signs on July, the very very same day, the seventeenth of July at nine o one London, nine p.m. London, and here's the chart for it. Pluto is rising. The Sun Moon is at the uh, still very conjunct. I mean, we are two hours uh, after the exact uh, uh, new moon. It's on the descendant, so they are setting both, and uh, the vertex is on this uh, triple conjunction of uh, of trans Pluto, Venus, and Mars. And as you can see, everything is the same, really. Sedna, now Sedna is on the DIC. We need to dissect things and create new stuff uh, from, the, uh, from the working pieces and throw out the non-working pieces of our life. And the, uh, as, I, as I said, uh, the nodal axis went back into Libra, Air, uh, Aries, 29 degrees, 59 uh, minutes, uh, 59 seconds.
And from this moment, for the next one and a half years, the focus will be on fighting. Yes, uh, the uh, Libra South Node indicates that we are going to choose sometimes balance, communication, diplomacy. Yeah, let's be fair, things like that. So the, uh, um, uh, the reflex uh, attitude, uh, the instinctual attitude will be that. But we need to learn to fight. We have one and a half years of fight ahead of us. Of course, a lot of people will comply. A lot of people will do whatever Libra South Node is telling them. Oh, shut up. Don't, don't say this. You're going to get canceled. You're going to get ruined. Just don't say as a word. Just accept as it is. Be diplomatic, blah, blah, blah. But the rest of us who knows that this is a pivotal moment for mankind because we could lose our freedom once and for all. We can lose uh, European um, culture as it is. Uh, we can use uh, uh, we can lose everything, really. Whatever was there for us in our, our childhood, in our adulthood, in our accepted way of life, all can be taken away from us uh, in a couple of years if we don't fight back. And luckily, the uh, the people of Europe are starting to wake up um, in interesting ways. I'm not saying a word at the moment because I, I need to consider uh, all the facts uh, but uh, throughout the year why, uh, and year and a half, while the North Node is in Aries, I will be looking at stuff and will let you know how the people are, are actually taking up fight and, and fighting for their rights, because that is what is going to happen in the next one and a half years. And the karmic cage, which, which was dissociate here. So if we go back to, to the very beginning, somewhere right here, uh, there is a T-square involving, yeah, not here, sorry. Oh, I'm getting tired. I'm, I really apologize. I'm making all sorts of mistakes, but bear with me. I will find that drawing. Actually, to, to create those drawings takes a lot of time. Here. No, that's the mutable T-square in a minute. Yes, here. Uh, this is the uh, karmic cage with the nodes and Pluto. And since the nodes here in this particular moment are still in Scorpio and Taurus, and Pluto is already in Capricorn. This is a karmic cage that actually has a trine and a sextile energy. But two hours later, all of a sudden, we have a proper karmic cage, Pluto in Capricorn and the nodal, nodal axis in, in uh, Aries and Libra. And there will be an exact moment when the Pluto nodal axis T-square karmic cage becomes exact to the minute, but uh, the, the energy pattern starts here. So Pluto is actually teaching us to transform whatever we did so far and we, how we try to comply and try to be nice and try to be, uh, uh, yeah, fair. Everyone is equal and everyone is should be equal. There's no such thing as equality, just to let you know. And the, the, the powers that be and the leaders are never equal to you. They look down on you. They despise you. They hate you. They don't care what you think. And uh, the North Node in Aries will teach us how to fight. And Pluto in the next couple of weeks is reinforcing this new energy. So that is it. Uh, happy new moon. It's not a very bright picture that I was drawing for you, but hopefully it will help you uh, take up the challenge. Uh, I wish you well. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.